Lord, everybody. God is so good. And truly, the Lord's mercy, it endures until the end. Well, bless God, I have a quick word for you. I just wanted to come on real quickly as we head into 2018. This may be the last message for me for 2017, but I'll see you on the other side. And as I was thinking about that, you know, many of us, if the devil would have had his way, you know, we were not supposed to see this day. We were not supposed to be going into 2018. Do you know that? You know, if he has fought you as hard as he has fought me, my God, hallelujah, God must have something fabulous planned uh, for his people. And may 2018 be the year that you recover all, that we go back and get everything that the enemy has taken from us. May it be that type of a year. And you know, also, as I was thinking about 2018 and my theme, I heard a prophet say, you know, singing, God did it again. And may that be your testimony. Hallelujah. So come on and go with me as I encourage you with God's word. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, the 32nd chapter and the 27th verse, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? And I've taken for a subject matter as long as God is in it. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for, again, this opportunity, Father, to minister your word to your people. Father, I pray and I bless your people this evening, Father. I bless them going into 2018, Father God. For as they go into 2018, Father, as they follow and hunger after you, God, I pray and I ask in the mighty name of Jesus, whatever they still have need of as we transition into the new year. God, I pray that you would do it for them, Father. I pray, God, if they need healing, you would do it. Uh, if they need to be delivered from something, God, uh, you would do it. If they need finances, God, you would do it. For you are the God that cannot fail. Uh, you are the great I am. Uh, you are the one that speaks, Father, and it is. Uh, and so, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus and I start in agreement with them, whatever they are calling on your name for. And so, Father, as I began to teach this message, I pray, God, that you would speak through by your spirit, Father. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would give me rhema word for your people. God, guide my thoughts in my mouth, Father, that I might speak and say, God, only those things that the spirit is leading me to say. So, Father, lead me by your spirit so that your people would be ever my Lord and you would be glorified so let the words of my mouth and the meditation of mine heart God let it be acceptable in thy sight oh Lord my strength and my redeemer I pray and I ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus amen one must realize what God was saying in this text that we just read, where he says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? You know, the greatness of our God, the greatness of what, you know, he is to his people. And the greatness of what he demonstrates when his people are in trouble, he says to his people, I am the God of all flesh. Whatever it is that is coming against you, I created it and I have power over everything. I am the supreme being. I am the true and the living God, he says. I am the one that sits on the throne and I am the one that commands from the throne and his people, if we would just grasp who he is, if we would understand that he's the God of all flesh, even the, the evil, you know, he has created. And sometimes he uses the evil for his benefit. But know that the same God that'll sin and set something loose on you is the same God that'll double back and get that witch, you know, have the audacity to touch his people. And you know, such was the case here in the text. The people were in trouble. They were getting ready to go through something. But he wanted them to know that in the midst of all of that, don't you forget that I am the God of all flesh. Hallelujah. And that I, nothing is too hard for me. And although you were going through something, you're coming out of it. And when we understand that, you know, it causes 
our faith to go. When we look at the story of the children of Israel and how the prophets spoke, and you know, God did exactly what he said he was going to do. And he, you know, built their faith through it and he, you know, restored them and encouraged them. And you know what, as I begin to think about that, you know, one thing that I know about God's people and that I can say about his people, that his people are resilient. And when you are resilient, you know what that means? It means that you have survived something and you recovered. And I don't know about you, but I get excited because everyone in the Bible that God allowed to suffer some things, you know, they all survived it. And because they went through it, hallelujah, with the right attitude, they went through it. God blessed them. You know, you can look at Job. You can look at Joseph. You can look at all oh, many people in the Bible. I can go on and on naming those that were faithful to trust God. And God came through for them. So as we head into 2018, know that everything that you suffered in 2017 is going to pay you back. Huh? Hey, it's going to pay you back in 2018. And I want you to know that God has a proven track record for repaying those that stood strong for him. As I was pondering that and thinking about that, I was reminded of Abraham. You know, Abraham had a little problem with his wife, Sarah. They were old and Sarah was barren. But because Abraham trusted in God, because he took God at his word, and when God had said that he was going to give them a son, you know, they trusted in God. And although they had to go through some things, God came through for them. God did it for Abraham and Sarah. And just as he did it for Abraham and Sarah, I want you to know, even as I was thinking about their story, you know, sometimes God would allow things in your life just so that he might reveal himself to you. Have you ever thought about that? Maybe he allowed Sarah to be barren so that he can show them uh, he is the great I am. Uh, and even though you are as, you know, that old in age, I'm still going to give you a baby of promise. Hallelujah. And God, again, he did it for Abraham and Sarah. Another story, as I was thinking about in, you know, the Old Testament and just reminiscing about those great stories. And there's so many in the Old Testament. I was reminded of the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And that's where we're going to park the car at, you know, and speak about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego tonight. Their story can be found in the book of Daniel, the third chapter. And it talks about a king named Nebuchadnezzar. He made a gold image that, you know, commentators and scholars have stated that it was about 90 feet high and nine feet wide. And he called the leaders, you know, once that golden image, they said it was hollow, maybe made out of wood and it was overlaid with gold. Can you imagine that? This big old tall 90 foot um, image and nine foot wide. And he said, you know, he called all the leaders together in, in the land and and he told them, come on, let's go on and dedicate. You know, they had a little dedication service for the idol that they were going to worship. But little did they know, you know, there were some people, some Jewish people who had some, you know, custom in them, who had some Bible in them, uh, who had some God-fearing ways in them. And so, so it was when, you know, um, the the um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego con was confronted by, you know, the custom to bow down when all the music began to play. Hallelujah. And let's just, you know, let's go to the book of Daniel before I get too ahead of myself. Verse 5 says that at the time you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the harp, the lyre, and the psaltery in the symphony with all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the gold image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And so that was the word that went forth as the trumpet sound, they had, you know, they had a herald in that day. He would herald out, you know, to all the people. They go throughout the land telling them what the new command was from the king. So they built this monstrous image. And when the instrument of music played, as the scripture said, they had to worship it. Now, you know what? I was thinking about that. Let's stop right here for a second, too. 
because I was wondering what was behind all this, you know, a big 90. Why do people worship, you know, idols? What is behind all of this? And what is the devil seeking to do, you know, by having people worship something that's dead? And as I asked the Holy Spirit, what is it here? Why, you know, were they worshiping this, this image? What is this all about? And do you know what the Holy Spirit said to me? He said that it's about control. They played the music and the ones under, you know, this mind control did what they were told to do. And they did it out of fear you know, or being thrown into the fire. And that's what this world and the enemy, if you think about it, seeks to do to God's people. They try to control, you know, God's people. Have you ever heard of the, of the testimony of murderers who, you know, have gone out and hurt others, how they've testified that, you know, they was listening to this rock band or this, um, this type of band, you know, these um, demonic bands and sat satanic bands. And then after that, they got the feeling, you know, they want to go out and harm others. You know, control, that's how Satan works through um, the worship of idols and works through those demonic forces to control people and take over their lives. But I want you again to know there were three by the name of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego caught up in this world system that refused, although they were in that kingdom, they refused to bow down to the idols. Because you know what? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they feared God more than they feared that fierce king Nebuchadnezzar. And they made him mad too. And what I want you to know um, before we go any further in the text, I believe that, you know, 2018 is going to be a year of great victory for the people of God. And it's going to be great victory and great glory because the people of God are going to take a stand for God. You know, we are confronted with all kind of issues that want to cause the people of God to compromise and to say, you know, to turn and look the other way. No, we are the people of God. We are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. We have to be just that. And we have to stand for what we believe regardless of how the world is going to view us regardless of what is going to happen when you stand for God he will stand with you such is the case with Shadrach Meshach and Abednego when they were thrown into that fire and the day came dropping down to verse 15 the day came when the music played and Shadrach Meshach and Abednego were faced with a choice it says in verse um, 15 now, if you are ready at the time you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the harp, the lyre, and the sultry in symphony with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made, good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hand? Let's stop right here. <laughs> King never could never just invoke a challenge. And little did he know he was speaking more or biting off more than he can chew. When it comes to the true and the living God, God will humble. You know, we can see God will humble you in a minute. When you stand tall against God, talking about who your God is, God will show you who he is, hallelujah, and he'll make sure that you know who has all power, who is Lord. He will let you know real quick, especially when you're messing with his children. And let me let you know what the response of the people of God were. In verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O King Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. But they were saying, you already done started the fight. Huh? So we're going to step aside and let you have a fight huh, with God. Hallelujah. Because when you mess with some of God's people, huh, you're not messing with them, but you're messing with God. Huh? So they were saying, you know, God is our defense. We're going to step aside and we're going to see who is Lord. And all that I want you to know, people of God, all that he requires of us 
is that we do take a stand. And because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood and refused to bow down, it made him angry. And so it was, he ordered them into the fire. But God came through, I want you to know, hallelujah, God came through for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and he preserved them right in the midst of that fiery furnace. And I want you to know, the same fire, hallelujah, that was turned up seven times to kill um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego ended up killing the ones that had threw them in it. For when they walked them up and threw them in there, the heat was so intense, the ones that had taken them up are the ones that ended up dying. But you know what, as I read on in the story, what really intrigued me was when, you know, the king went up near the furnace. And unlike the other men that had died when they went up to the furnace that close, the king did not die. And so I asked, that intrigued me. Why did these other men die when they went that close to that seven times hot? But yet this king, Nebuchadnezzar, who ultimately was the one that ordered them in, why didn't he die? The Holy Spirit began to minister to me. He allowed the king to remain alive, to show the king real authority. Who is in control? Because I want you to know, Nebuchadnezzar had permission to throw them into the fire, but he didn't have the power to kill them. Hallelujah. And I thought about that even if you think about um, Pharaoh, when the children of Israel were in um, Egypt, he had permission to do a lot of things to them, but he didn't have the power, hallelujah, ultimately to stop them or to ultimately kill all of them. Now, some of them may have perished in Egypt, but not all of them. He didn't have the power to stop them, to utterly stop them as he wanted to do. Nebuchadnezzar threw them into the fire, but God brought them out. God did it for them. Pharaoh oppressed them, but God delivered them. And I want you to know tonight, as we head into 2018, 2017 is gone. All of the things that we, all of the victories, you know, remember them. Even the, the problems, remember how God brought you out of everything. And know that the same God that was with you in 2017, that delivered you, that kept you, hallelujah, encouraged you and built you up, is the same God waiting already in 2018. And I believe it's going to be the year of the comeback. Hallelujah. You know, God will only allow the enemy so much time in your life. If you look at all the stories, everything always came to an end. Job's trouble came to an end. Joseph's trouble came to the end. Children of Israel, enslavement came to an end. Hallelujah. Every time, you know, even David's trouble came to an end. Everything comes to an end eventually. And God, you know, he wouldn't be fair if he allowed you to just suffer and continue to suffer. No, he is a God that, you know, will cause it to come to an end and then he will bless you real good. Hallelujah. He'll bless you for, you know, being that one that went through through with, with courage, that went through with faith, that went through praising him in the midst of everything that you might have suffered. Oh no, if you trust God, you're going to see God do it again for you in 2018. And as I close, reminding you of what the text says, the book of Jeremiah, the 32nd chapter and the 27th verse, behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? I declare to you today that your testimony shall be in 2018. God did it again. You know, 
I never want to close one of my videos without giving someone the opportunity to give their life to the Lord. You know, in the days and the hours and the time that we are living in now, it demands that you know who you are, who you belong to, and where you are going. And so I want to give you the opportunity to give your life to the Lord. If you have not heard the story, the Bible declares that we were all born sinners. It says over in the book of Romans, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that transpired back in the book of Genesis where Adam disobeyed God. And because of Adam's disobedience, sin and death entered into the world. And so Jesus, who was God's sacrificial lamb because a price had to be paid for the sins of the world. So God sent in John 3 16, he says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that's what I want to give you the opportunity to do today, to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, to wash away all of your sins. Romans 10 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. Romans 10 13 says, if you call on the name of the Lord, he will save you. So just repeat this prayer after me. Also, if you have walked away from the Lord, come on back home. Just say, Lord, I confess that I am a sinner. I'm sorry for the wrong that I have done. Please forgive me. I invite you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I denounce Satan. I declare that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. And now that I am your child, please fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you have said that prayer, God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. Know today all of heaven is rejoicing because you have chosen to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. Welcome again to the family of God.